I'd like to begin this session by saying God does not call anyone so that he can refuse them. The Bible makes us to understand that God has saved us and he has called us according to his divine purpose. But it's very important for you to understand that God does not call a man so that he can reduce him. Rather, so that he can exhort him at the end. God does not call people to shame. He calls them to glory. It takes a man from rags to riches. And it is very important that you know this because I believe a lot of people are afraid to follow the call of God for their lives. They are scared of stepping into purpose because they believe that all the wealth and all the material things they have gathered, they are going to lose it. And probably their life is going to be less interesting or less adventurous as it has been in the past. And that is not true. Because I want you to know that life in God is the most adventurous and the most interesting life a man can ever encounter. All you need to do is to go into scriptures and see how Jesus lived a very adventurous, miraculous and supernatural life. Because don't forget your purpose can take you anywhere. You are not just sent to what you are not just sent to a small location. You might discover that your purpose can take you places. Who knows? Maybe your assignment is to is to go around every nation on this planet Earth, doing the work of God preaching his word, teaching his word, doing business, investing for the kingdom. Your purpose can take you to places where no man or any form of money can take you to. So a lot of people dread answering the call of God because they believe that it will reduce them instead of exhort them. There is an example of a man in the Bible who asked Jesus how he can inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus said to him, simple, take all that you have, sell it, and give the money to the poor, and then follow me. But the Bible tells us that this man was miserable because his focus was on his wealth. His focus was on his material things, but not on eternal life. Because by following Jesus, you gain access to everything that you will ever need in life. Jesus is our sufficiency. The Bible says all things that were made were made by him. Everything consists in him. Jesus is God himself and God cannot be poor because all things are his. It says the thousand cattle on a, on, a, on a thousand hills, they all belong to God. So why do you think God calling you is a call to a reduced life? I want you to get it today in this teaching. That purpose is a call to greatness. That is what is going to be established in the next few minutes. That a call, that purpose is a call to greatness. When God calls a man, he calls him into greatness. And when we are talking about greatness, we are not talking about greatness as defined by the world. But greatness as defined by the word of God. Jesus knew this. 
and he experienced greatness not because he's the son of god but because he came to fulfill his purpose and he completed it and i'm going to show you from the book of philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11 that jesus encountered greatness because he stepped into purpose not because he was privileged to be the son of god because god is not a partial god god is no respecter of man but the same God is rich unto all men, whether Greek or Jew. Is rich unto every man in every nation. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him. Why? Not because he, he is the son of God, but because of obedience. He was obedient unto death. The purpose of Jesus coming to this earth was to come and die on the cross in place of man for the remission of our sins. So he came to pay the price of our sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and because of his obedience to death the bible says that god highly exalted him that means he stepped into greatness because of purpose he stepped into greatness because of purpose it says that at the name of Jesus every knee shall, should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So there we have, see? But let this mind be in you. Let this be your mindset that Purpose is a call to greatness. God does not call a man to reduce him. He calls him to exalt him. He says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due season, he will exalt you. Humble yourself. When you humbly surrender yourself to the plan and purpose of God for your life, eventually at the appointed time, God will, will anoint you with a grace for greatness. You don't need to seek greatness. Greatness seeks after you when you seek the purpose of God for your life. That is why he said that seek, that we should seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things that men are pursuing after will follow you, will be added unto you. So don't pursue after the things that God said he will add unto you because greatness is your heritage but it is your purpose that connects you to that heritage. And I'm going to show you, read to you a scripture from the Bible to show you the connection between purpose and greatness. And we're going to look at something that Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 1 to 5. It says, This word spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many 
as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Look at it. Jesus Christ praying to the Father to glorify him with the glory he had with him before the foundation of the earth. Why? He said, for Father, I have finished the work. I have finished the work. Your life is destined for glory. And there is no greatness that is greater than the, than the glory of God. The glory of God is your portion as a child of God. But you have to do what he tells you to do, commands you to do. You must fulfill the purpose for which he has sent you. Jesus said, I have finished the work. Jesus didn't pray this prayer until he finished the work. He was called into greatness. Just as we have been called into greatness. Because we are now sons of God. Just as Christ is the son of God. Jesus is the son of God. And we are the sons of God. He is the first fruit. And we are the after fruit. So God is not a partial God. That's why Jesus Christ said in the same chapter 17, He said, Father, show them that thou lovest them even as thou lovest me. Equally. That is equal love of the Father for all of his children. So you don't need to seek after greatness. Greatness will seek after you as long as you step into the assignment of God for your life. The moment you make God's purpose for your life, your mission, you are on your way to greatness. When God calls a man, yes, initially it might seem as if you're going from the top to the bottom. But the reason why God starts men from the bottom is so that when he takes them to the top, no man can take the glory. So that no man can say yes by my own means, by my own, by my own power, I have accomplished the task. A good example of this in the Bible is the story of Joseph. Joseph had a dream that God gave him that he was going to be a big great personality in the land of Egypt. That he was going to be a ruler. Yet, the coat of many colors that his father gave him was taken from him and he was beaten and put in the pit. The journey of Joseph to the palace began in the pit and he was sold as a safe slave into Potiphar's house. And from being a slave in Potiphar's house, even though he was favored by God, he ended up in prison. And not only was he in prison, he was left in prison for more than two years until God, by his own hand, created an avenue for him to be called into the palace and then God enthroned him there. So yes, you are called into greatness. However, your beginning may be small. God may have to humble you first so that you know that it is not by power, it is not by might that that greatness will be achieved. God doesn't need what you have to make you who you are created. He has created you to be. No. God has everything that he needs to make you great. So God is not calling you because of the money you have, you, you have in the bank. God is not calling you because of your big business. In fact, God would rather that you start with nothing in your hand so that when you get to the end of the road, when you get to the end of your journey and you say, Father, it is finished. And when you look back, you will see that every provision for your purpose 
was provided by God. That's why Jesus Christ said to his disciples, when I sent you without pause and script, lucky anything? They said no. Did they get the job done? Yes. So, God doesn't need what you have in your hand already. No. That's why Jesus said to that rich man, sell all you have and give it to the poor and follow me. So, don't think because of your degree or because of your money, that is why God is calling you. That is why God has favored you. No. All God needs for the assignment is you. You. He only needs you. Every other thing will be supplied by himself. Because only God can provide for the work he has given you because it is not your work, it is his work. So God will provide for his work. If it is your work, then you have to provide for it. But if it is his work, then he will provide for it. That is why Jesus Christ said, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So, the assignment that God has placed in your hand is not just your work, it is his work. You are in co-partnership with God doing his work. That is your mission. And that is why at the end of the day, you will enter into his glory. That is why you will encounter glory. It says, arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. You want to see the glory of God rise up upon thee? Then you have to seek after purpose and fulfill it. Because while you are pursuing purpose, and doing what God has called you to do, his glory will be seen upon you. That's why the Bible says, arise and shine. You can't arise and shine without the first discovering his purpose for your life. Because what purpose does is to shine a light into your life. The Bible says, he sent a word to, into Israel. And it has lighted upon Jacob. So God's word reveals to you your purpose. And when you step into it, it lightens your world. Purpose lightens your world. No wonder it says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, a peculiar people. Who, has, who God has called out of darkness into his marvelous light. I want us to quickly read Genesis chapter 12 and look at the life of a man who God called. God called him and at the beginning of that call, God revealed to him that it was not an ordinary call but a call into greatness Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 4 and that's we're looking at the call of Abraham so I want you to understand that your greatness in life is tied to your purpose I'll repeat that in case you want to write that down your greatness in life is tied to your purpose. Now, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of here. Do you see that? God called Abraham. We don't have time to talk about um, the whole call of Abraham because, you know, for time. However, if you study the Bible, 
you will see that God first called Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. And when he told his father, his father might, must have said, you know what? I'm going to identify with the God that has called you. Because up to that time, they were all idol worshippers. When they were living in the all of Chadians, they were idol worshippers. So God called Abraham out of a background of idol worshipping because he had a plan for his life. God had decided that he was going to choose Abraham to be the father of his people. He, God had purpose in his heart that the generation of Christ was going to come to the lineage of Abraham. Because if you trace the genealogy of Jesus in the Bible, Jesus as a, as a man, it comes all the way from Abraham to David and all the way to Joseph and then to Jesus. So many generations in between. But what I want you to understand that God chose Abraham not because of anything that Abraham did, but because he is God. God had ordained him before he was formed in his mother's womb. God knew Abraham. And God had already decided that Abraham was going to be a great man. And here God was calling him. And God said, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and I will make thy name great. It says, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And cause him that cause thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. How? Through Christ Jesus. Oh my God. This is what greatness is all about. God called Abraham out of a destructive past into a future of greatness. And that I want you to know that God has greater plans for your life. Do you know why I know that? Because the Bible says that the glory of the latter house shall surpass the former. We are in the season of the latter rain. We, as the body of Christ, we are the latter house. The glory of the latter house shall surpass the former. So whatever glory Abraham as a person and as a vessel or instrument in the hand of God encountered, we will encounter greater. Why? Because of our connection to Jesus Christ. So, don't be afraid to respond to God's call upon your life. It is a call into purpose. And it's a call into greatness. Yes, one thing you need to understand, especially what Job chapter 8 verse 7 said, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. May God may call you from a humble beginning or from a humble background, and you think that's, that your life probably would not amount to anything. But I can, I can tell you, that you, you can be rest assured that if you obey the commandment of God to step into his purpose for your life, it doesn't matter where you are right now. All I know is that your end is going to greatly increase. The Bible says the gift of a man maketh room for him and bringeth him before great man. Another time when we talk about the gifts and the callings of God, then I'll talk more about that. But your purpose is tied to greatness. You can't have purpose and not have greatness. No, because it is one entity. That is why greatness is not a destination. It is a journey. It is a gradual and progressional journey. Because God is going to take you from glory to glory. You encounter the glory of God as you go along the path of purpose. As you are in pursuit of your purpose, God will be He, he will be lacing your life with his glory. 
and it's going to be progressional. It is going to be gradual. You will go from one level of glory to the other, another level of glory onto another level of glory. Line upon line and precept upon precept. So don't be afraid to answer that call because you know what? It is a call to greatness. Though thy beginning be small, thy end shall greatly increase. You may be at the top of your own personal achievement or endeavors, but allow God to humble you, to take you to a a different top that is greater than where you are at the moment. There is no achieved thing you have ever achieved in your life that can ever be as great as the things that God wants to achieve through you. The Bible says that they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. They shall do what? They shall do exploit because God will be with them. The only thing that guarantees your all-round presence of God in your life is for you to pursue after God's purpose for your life. The Bible says how that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power and he went about healing those that were um, that, those that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. God was with him. And you want to experience all around divine presence? Then answer his call. It's not a call to reduce you. It is a call to glorify his name And when God is glorified, he will exalt you. Jesus glorified God by the work that he did. And at the end of the day, the Father glorified him and exalted him and gave him a name above every name that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And I want you to know that God has said, I will make your name great but you have to answer to that call the bible tells us that abraham departed as the lord had spoken unto him that means he decided to leave his family his country his kindred and step into his future with god it's time for you to do the same for you to step into your future with god because that is where your greatness lies And I hope you will take time to to think, to meditate, and to pray that God will guide you into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time.